Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Diana Renee. And my name is Tife Dada. And we are a bookish pair. So if you're just watching for the first time, please subscribe to our channel. If you haven't already subscribed and turn on the notifications so you get all our updates in real, real time. time. Yes, yeah, so we are going to be reviewing a book today. Drum roll. And that <laughs> is The Secret Lives of, of Baba, Baba Segi's, Segi's Wives. wives. Oh now gosh. this book is the hilarious best nigerian <laughs> book i have ever read oh my god lola show you any if you're watching no, that, I, love you. yeah. <laughs> I love you Lives of Baba Segi's Wives was written by Lola Shonei and yeah. was published by Cassava Republics in 2010. Um, the book has gone on to win several awards already, yeah. and it was longlisted for the Orange UK Prize, Prize in 2011 and also won the Oakland, Oakland yeah, Penn, Penn Oakland Penn. Award in 2011 yeah. and also won Association of Nigerian Authors Awards, like two awards of that. Yeah. So, yeah, and Lola Shonei is. Um, a poet as well and she's the pioneer of the Aki Arts and Book, book Festivals. Festival. So yeah, that's just basically the rundown of the book. So the story is about Baba Segi and his four wives and is basically a man who is so confident in his variety. He has seven children and then his youngest wife, Bolandi, comes into the house and two years on no child. Mm -hmm. So they all um, struggle to get a child, exposes the entire family secrets, the dark secrets of the family. So the national takes us on a journey through the family <laughs> of Baba Segi and his, his wives. So this book has um, a whole lot of themes. Things. Lola addresses so many societal issues, issues yeah. um, using different scenarios and instances in this book. Um, one that we can talk of is you know, civilization versus traditional methods. Mm -hmm. And we can see that in the life of Baba Segi and his fourth Bola wife, Bonale, where she couldn't conceive and Bola, um, Baba Segi wanted to take her to, you know, um, native doctors yeah. and all that to check what was wrong with her. And Bonale suggested, oh, they go to a so hospital. Well, and Baba Segi was really reluctant in doing that. So you could see the clash of you know, Western civilization versus traditional methods. Um, Lola also touches bases with um, education, with education, the importance yeah, of education. No, really the good. first, second, and third wives were illiterate. Even Baba Sagi himself, himself was yeah. an illiterate. So and Bolani was a really graduate. Exactly. <laughs> and they, they um, kind of hated her for it. Yes, exactly. They hated her for it. And then um, and they felt very insecure around, around her, her because she was educated. So they felt, oh, you know, this one must come and take her husband because she thinks she's, she's and a you know, even, even when she wanted to, like, you know, help them, oh, yeah. the family, yeah, educate, teach them, like, teach them, teach the wives, yeah, really help, the, help those children with their homework, homework and, and, and all, yeah. they still resisted, like. Yeah, so it just, um, the law just exposes the importance of education. Um, there's also feminism. feminism there's, yeah. I mean, uh, where Baba Segi feels, you know, a wife should be this. I'm not really going to go into the whole feminism. We're not doing that. <laughs> topic, <laughs> but there's a lot of feminism <laughs> in the book. Um, it's not a feminist book, so don't, don't, don't. It's just it just addresses some yeah. issues with feminism. There's also religion. There's love. There's polygamy. Polygamy. Yeah. There's corruption in government. So Lola, I just love how she was able to address so and many things yeah. in this book um, and then the way the thing just blended blended and then yeah. um it's also a book that has many characters but you do not feel disconnected They're or not lost. lost yeah you do not feel disconnected mm -hmm. or lost there was how she was able to plan the whole thing so you're reading about this character you're reading about this character and everything is just you know fits in and just in. Makes exactly it makes sense. perfect sense so you're not lost They're like oh who is this person who is this person mm -hmm. like, you're not it takes you through a journey like yeah. you know she said and it's just i mean an, an amazing way of writing her writing style is whoa <laughs> like i was blown yeah. uh, she's this first first and third person mm -hmm. and you're also not lost when she's writing in first person when she's writing in third person it's amazing and her writing style is simple it's really it's easy, easy to relate understand to. it's relatable you know just so many issues like and you're just like oh yeah i can relate, can to, relate this. to that yeah it's really relatable and 
all of that. So yeah, um, and the book is set in Ibadan. Oh yes, Oyo yes, State, Oyo State in Nigeria. Ibadan, Nigeria. Okay, so there are many things I particularly love about this book, but some stand out for me. I okay. love um, how she was able to develop the characters oh, yeah. very well, even um, flat characters that didn't really have much, much where the their story was properly developed and I mean, you know, okay, this person is, exists here and all of mm -hmm. that. I love the plotting of the book. It is really tight. There were no plot holes, so you're not like, ah, where did this happen? Yeah. Ah, where did this join from? <laughs> you know, the plot hole was really, like, her plotting was really tight. Um, I love her use for figurative speeches, idioms, proverbs. It felt real African, um, especially when you're seeing all those African um, proverbs. There's quite mm -hmm. a lot in this book. Um, it felt really, you know. And the infusion of like Yoruba. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the language, her use of language, exactly, was really, really good. Yeah. So I don't think there's anything I dislike about the book, really. Anything to say about this book. Yes, and I mean, this is her debut novel, and it was a hit, <laughs> like bullseye. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a really good book. Yeah. So, we recommend that if you haven't read it, you should definitely pick up a copy. Definitely. This book has been around for a while, so oh, wow. it shouldn't be difficult to get a copy. Yeah. And if you've read this book, would like to know your thoughts on it, how did you like it, just let us know how would you read this book. Just drop us a comment in the comment section yep. and let's continue the conversation from there. Okay, so the how should you read this book? For me, <laughs> <Let's> I will, <laughs> for me, I'll give this book a nine. Yeah, nine. A nine. So yes. It's a nine from both of us. <laughs> it's, <a nine. laughs> it's that good. It's that good. <laughs> so it's definitely a nine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've come to the end of today's review and hope you had an amazing time joining us with the review of the book Secret Lives of Abbas and His Wives. If you did enjoy this video, please give us a thumbs up because that will go a long way. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you get our updates real time and let's keep the conversation going in the comment section. Yes. So that's it today from The Bookish Press. Bye. Bye.